which solicitation do I write a proposal for? That's what this is about. And if you haven't already, check out my book, winnerswaybook.com. You have to understand what you are bidding on. What are you bidding for? You have to understand what is required. So let me break this down. There is this opportunity in Guatemala for waste management, right? But they wanted more than just a price quote. They wanted past performance, insurance. They wanted you to be able to explain that you've done something similar, maybe in country. What's your plan for waste management service to include, but not limited to a work plan, the type of equipment, supplies, materials, the project manager. They wanted all of these things. So getting the price quotes were easy, believe it or not. I think we ended up getting three, but you have to be aware of all of the extra thing because if you don't get that information, you can't bid and that's problematic because many of you, you hear about government contracting, you know you need a cage code, you know you need a business, you rush out, you get it. What happens is you end up spinning your wheels and you're going after all this stuff that doesn't make any sense. Like if the federal government ever asks you to mail in a bid, please don't ever bid, that's insane. Don't do that. So please keep this in mind because then I'm bombarded by people who are like, Kizzy, I've bid on 70 things and never won anything. Well, it's because you gotta understand, number one, what what do they want? What are you bidding on? Does it make sense? Now, if you find a waste management company in Guatemala, it's like, oh, that's easy. Here's our plan. Here's our references. Here's our insurance. But you have to make sure you're able to identify that information. Because if you can't identify that information and capture that information and package it in a way, you're never going to be able to bid. The next thing, which solicitation, which solicitation do I write a response to y'all? Which one? Here's the next thing that happened. Y'all get too caught up on what is the potential profit. What is the price? Okay. What often happens that I'm seeing people get caught up in, oh, it says it's between a million and two million. Oh my gosh, the price quote is for half a million. Look at how much money I can make. You got to take that step back and figure out what does it even require for me to bid on this? Instead of thinking about that, the mind is on the money. Listen, there's nothing wrong with having your mind on money and your mind on profit, but if it leads to you bidding and you never winning and you don't request a debrief, then why are you in business? It's like like you literally have a brick and mortar business and there's no Keith Lee for you. And you want people to come to your food truck and you want them to come to your seafood restaurant. We don't want that. Instead, the solicitations you want to bid on are those that are light. These are the types of things where, okay, yeah, a hundred people called for a price quote. That means you lower your profit. What's wrong with having a 5% profit? Have y'all looked up the average profit for a restaurant? It's like two to 5%. Something is better than nothing. If somebody said today, like, I, I just, I just want to put a 50% profit on and see what happens. I was like, you can, you're going to lose. I am not implying that you can never put a 50% profit. I'm not saying that. What I'm trying to say to you is what kind of experience do you want? Do you want one that's heavy? Like you just, you're, you're putting in all this effort and you're trying to walk. I don't know why I'm walking backwards. You're trying to walk, you're trying to get somewhere and you don't get there because your profit's too high. You don't realize what they need. You you win and then you find out after the fact, oh my gosh, Kizzy, I didn't factor in for the transportation. Oh my gosh, Kizzy, I didn't factor in that. I don't have $80,000 sitting at home. I get passionate about these things because it breaks my heart because you went through all these steps. You got a business, you got a UEI, you got a cage code, you're watching my content at all hours of the day, you're investing in yourself, you're learn, applying, adjusting, and then you can't win or you do win and it's all crazy. Which solicitation do I write a proposal to? Some of you, the belief is, okay, it's the numbers game. I'm not denying that y'all. It definitely is a numbers game. However, comma, you want to focus on those that you can win. So my suggestion is you want something weird. It's okay. If a million people have called, you just lower the profit. Maybe it's 3% and you want to make sure it doesn't require everything and the kitchen sink. You want it to require, like if it requires bid bond and payroll insurance, you may not have that stuff. You may not have it. Which solicitation do I write a proposal for? The answer is not all of them. The answer is some of them. And the answer is there may be a time where you're in the middle of doing it, may even be up till the day of or the day before, and you decide, nope, it's not for me. I can't get any other quotes. Something's weird with the sub. There's just some feeling about it. And this is really important, everybody. You gotta sometimes cut your losses. People get so caught up, like, well, I'd rather submit something. Okay, then you're gonna sell chicken that's undercooked and get people sell a manila? I'm not suggesting that you need to have the most perfect proposal. What I am putting out 
there is that you want something that you can stand by and you meet the requirements. That's why I came up with the proposal writing course because one of the biggest situations that I ran into here, I put the link there, is that people were paying people to write proposals and the proposal writers were interesting, which I'm in the middle of making a video on. People wrote proposals and bless their hearts, they just don't know what they're doing because you don't know what you don't know. It took me 10 years to learn this. And number three, Proposals are a part of it. That's the other thing. Which solicitation do I write a response to? You have to figure out which ones are you open to do the work for. You don't want to win something and then you're like, oh, I don't have the money for it. Who who did you think was going to give you the money? Like, again, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I, I'm, I'm asking for real. Like, this comes from, it comes from my heart. Where is this coming from? Do you think you're going to push, pull a lever and like move? Money's gonna fall out. I'm not on here for my ego or anything like this. I do this because I care. I have active contracts. For those of you who don't know, my name is Dr. Kizzy Parks. Kizwiz is a nickname. You see me on the cover, government of a magazine proclaimed the queen of government contracts. I have about a hundred people who work for me. I have a lot of government contracts. I'm expanding my team. So I, that's why I have my thoughts about dip. That's why I have my thoughts about micro purchases. People want to run game and that's why it's confusing. That's why when people start to look for solicitations, they're like this because they were sold a dream by somebody that doesn't have a contract. Oh, you you just go for some micro purchases. No, y'all go on dibs and sell some brooms. Really? Really? Really now? You going on dibs, sell some brooms? Okay. Okay. Tell me how that works. Even the Unison stuff is a lot of it's myth. You get paid and you got to pay back Unison. They include it. You get it as part of your money. It doesn't come, it's not taking it from you. But Unison's not paying you ahead of time. Who's paying for those thousand computers you bid on? People ask this all the time. What's the easiest to win and what niches? Should I do niches or whatever, or bigger third, go wide? You have to do what works for you. I suggest you go after what you can deliver. Don't end up like the people who win a contract and then they don't have any money because there is not, there's no one path to government contracting success. There's not one path. Like people ask me all the time, what was the first contract you won? I, it didn't work like that for me. I was a graduate research fellow at Patrick Air Force Base. I didn't have to bid on anything. I was given a subcontract. That's just my story. Other people's story is different. Maybe they started out selling crates and then they ended up bidding on contracts and won a religion co religious contract. There's other people who started off doing mentoring and then they end up getting mentoring and um, trans translation contracts from the government. There are some people like the, there's this one gentleman I interviewed where his first contract he won. Everybody's different. So the thing is that the thing is about this space is you want people who are supportive. And that's why I created the Facebook group because I want your support. I want us to support each other, lift each other up. Now, are there approaches to get ahead of opportunities that take 18 months? Of course there are. Are there ways to win contracts because of relationships that may take a year or two? Of course, but that's one approach. It's like sales. People can cold call, they can do postcards, they can send emails, they can send text messages. They may even write you a letter. I don't know, I don't know if people still do that. Yeah, one of my biggest idols is Cardi B. And one of the things I've always so love about her is you see all sides. Like the vi there's like that one clip when Offset was like playing video games and she had her bonnet on and I think a house coat, she was like sweeping, you know, or she had a video the other day with like a, scully cap on i don't think she had makeup on and then you see her all glam and you see you know it's like no matter what she's still the same whether you like her or not and i just really love people like that because i love you guys so much winnerswaybook.com let me give you the link okay i love and adore each and every one of you we've been on here a while you guys are amazing remember everything is possible